Hi VC, just a quick one from me today. This is going to be a Stump the VC video and uh, I can personally guarantee that uh, the record I'm going to show today, nobody else in the VC or indeed anywhere in the world uh, will ever have seen this record before, <clears throat> uh, will know anything about it at all <clears throat> and uh, it'll be news to everybody. <clears throat> When I was a kid, I was really massively into Squeeze, and uh, at some point I'm going to do a video about them. But, when I was in, let me think, um, probably about year two of school, year three maybe, this is back in 1979, I was really heavily into Squeeze, and I formed my own band <clears throat> when I was in school, and we were not called Squeeze, we were called Squirm, that's S-Q-U-I-R-M. We didn't play any instruments, we didn't write any songs, but I was the lead singer and I played air guitar. I was Glenn Tilbrook, basically, and uh, I kind of got this little band together, and it was all my school friends, and I can still remember to this day who everybody was meant to be. For example, my friend uh, Philip Jones was Chris Difford, because he had quite short hair. Um, Andrew Douglas, the class uh, slightly overweight boy, was Gilson Lavis. Sh uh, Jules Holland was uh, a girl, actually, called Sean Owen, and I got on with quite well. And John Bentley was my mate, Dean Nesbitt. We, so we formed this band, or I formed this band, uh, called Squirm. And we used to get up in front of the class and play uh, our songs. <clears throat> and um, I just look back now, and it was excruciatingly embarrassing to remember it all, but anyway... That was what we did. I mean, I could never get them to rehearse. I mean, they were not that committed to the band, really. It was my little pet project. <clears throat> um, and we didn't make any records or play any gigs or anything. We were just little kids. But what I did used to do, my dad, well, I used to uh, make records, basically. And how I used to do it was we would get, uh, I would get my dad to get a record from his collection that he didn't want or sometimes it would be uh, a sort of naff record that one of my relatives had given to me perhaps like something by Neil Sedaka or something like that I've got nothing against Neil Sedaka but when I was a kid I wasn't into that kind of music but you know friends and relatives would buy me records because they knew that I liked records and my dad would cover the sleeve of the record uh, with uh, white paper and he would also cover the uh, the label with white paper as well, thus giving me a blank canvas on which to create my own personal masterpieces. So the record I'd like to show you today is the debut album by Squirm, and it is called Squirm in Hell, which is a lovely title. Uh, as you can see here, it was on A&M Records, there we go, because Squeeze were on A&M. Now for some reason it says squirm, squirm in hell here, and then it says squirm up there with a question mark. So it seemed that the band name was actually Squirm as a question. <clears throat> the album, as you can see, cost £3.50 to buy. Now then, there's something strange going on on this album sleeve. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. There seems to be some kind of monster there and he's saying growl, and he seems to be clambering up a, a, a kind of little rock thing here, and there's a very odd-looking beast there with several noses, several eyes, and what looks like a, a huge, uh, pump, uh, a big sort of uh, big hair thing happening here. I'm not quite sure what that is. There's also what looks to be Zebedee from the Magic Roundabout here, um, now here there's something vaguely obscene, I'm just going to give you a very quick, short, sharp look at that because it's actually quite uh, quite pornographic and disturbing. And, and here there's some kind of beast, some sort of octopus-like beast. Um, yeah, so Squirm in Hell. Now on the back there is uh, some song titles which you probably can't really see very clearly. Side 1, Sex Mad is the opening song. Tide Friends, Crumbs, Never Again, Side 2, uh, all sorts of things. But there's a weird like monster there with big kind of sharp teeth and the band are riding on the monster. And you can see here. Now what makes this all doubly confusing is that uh, it was my friend in the band and we were supposed to be these guys out of Squeeze but 
I gave everybody like, different names. We, we So we weren't actually Glenn Tilbrook and Jules Holland. We were these people. Furbank Jr. on drums. That was Andrew. Uh, Shag Evans, uh, I think, was meant to be John Bentley on bass. Oh, I was actually Glenn Tilbrook. That's interesting. There's Glenn there. Uh, and a few other people. I can't read some of these names now. Fred Fred Biggs, I think, was meant to be Chris Difford. Um, there's the A and M logo again. It doesn't say squirm on the spine. Now the record inside, all a bit strange. That the label you can't really see it, can you? It says BBC there for some reason. BBC Records. Uh, there's a really filthy, horrendous scratch on there. Now, I have absolutely no idea what this record originally was. Like I say, it might have been a record that belonged to my dad. He he, he would sometimes give me sort of classical records that he didn't want anymore. Uh, but it might, it might be something completely different. So at the end of this video, I'm basically going to cue this record up on my old little Danzet record player, and I'm going to play out with whatever the music is on this record. Um, but yeah, I just thought you might like to see that squirm uh, there were some other squirm albums uh, but I'm struggling to find them they're here somewhere I'm sure they're here in the cupboard somewhere I just don't know where they are but if I do find them one day maybe I'll make a video of squirm's entire um, career um, so yeah yeah so here we go so we're gonna cut now to the record squirm in hell and it'll be news just as much news to me as it is to you what the music is on that album so I hope you enjoyed that VC and uh, I'll be back very soon for more fun and games take care have a great summer bye in connection with unit 10 introduction to literature part 2 here's the book of Ruth in the new English Bible translation first published in 1970 Read by Cicely Havely. Long ago, in the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the Moabite country with his wife and his two sons. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two young. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah, and there they stayed, like Naomi's husband died, his sons. These, one of whom was called Orpah, and the other, Ruth. They had lived there about ten lives, so that the woman withdrew her husband, therefore to return home.